Hello, and welcome to Common Core Algebra 1 with Kirk Weiler. Today, we're going to be taking a look at why the method of completing the squares works. Now, this doesn't particularly go with this lesson or that lesson in our curriculum, in the eMath curriculum. It simply is a look at why the algorithm for completing the square works the way it does. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm not going to be writing a bunch of things down. There's not going to be exercises or anything like that. This is simply trying to get a graphical explanation for an algebraic technique that you've already learned. Let's jump into it. All right, so solving a basic equation. Now, solving basic equations that have linear equations in them, like this, 5 times x minus 3 plus 7 equals 62, is kind of a piece of cake, because all we have to do is undo what's been done to x, right, in the opposite order. So in this case, maybe we would subtract a 7 from both sides, giving us 5 times x minus 3 equals 55. Then, of course, we could divide both sides by 5. That gives us just x minus 3 equals 11. And then we could add 3 to both sides and get a final solution, like x equals 14. Now, I get the fact that your initial instincts might be to distribute that 5 right in the first step and then combine some like terms, and that would be fine. You'd get x equals 14 as well. But here, we do it by simply undoing the order of operations, what's been done to x. Now, this leads us to an important question. How in the world do we solve something that's got a quadratic in it, right? I mean, there's question marks everywhere because we can't undo what's been done to x in this form, given that we have both an x squared and an x to the first. But if we had something like this, x plus 2 quantity squared equals 25, well, this is a quadratic that can be solved. Because if something squared equals 25, well, then that thing is either equal to 5 or that thing is equal to negative 5. So we get two equations, x plus 2 equals 5 and x plus 2 equals negative 5. And you can think about that as taking the square root of both sides. You just have to get remember to get both the plus 5 and the minus 5. Now, solving each one of these equations is as easy as subtracting 2 from both sides, giving us x equals 3 in the first case, and a little bit harder, x equals negative 7 in the other case. The strange thing is that every quadratic equation that starts off like x squared plus 8x can actually be put into the form that this problem has, using the method of completing the square. Now, let's review how you complete the square to solve an equation. So we've got this x squared plus 8x equals 33. Now remember, what we do when we complete the squares, we take that coefficient on the x, that 8, and we kind of pull it out for a second, and we divide it by 2. Of course, 8 divided by 2 is just 4. That's simple enough. But what do we do with the 4? Well, we take that 4, and we square it. Right now, it's easy enough. 4 squared is just equal to 16. Now, that 16, that's important. Because what we do is we kind of rewrite our equation, we slap our 8 back up beside the x, and then what we do is we add a 16 to both sides of the equation, right, to both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Now keep in mind that all we've really done at the end of the day, get rid of all this extra stuff, is we've simply added 16 to both sides. Remember, we started off with x squared plus 8x equals 33. So we just add 16 to both sides. We balance the scale, if you will. The cool thing is, by taking half of that 8, squaring it, and getting 16 and adding it on, that trinomial can be now written as x plus 4 squared. It is a perfect square. You can factor it as x plus 4 times x plus 4. Of course, 33 plus 16 is just 49. But now, we've rewritten our original equation, x squared plus 8x equals 33, as x plus 4 squared equals 49. And of course, we could solve that just like we solved that x plus 2 squared equals 25. We're not actually here, in this video, looking to solve those. We're just going to try to understand why you divide that 8 by 2 and square it and add it on. So let's take a look at why that works. It's really fascinating. Why does it work? Well, x squared plus 8x can actually be thought of as adding the areas of two rectangles. 
The first rectangle is actually a square, a square that has one side length of x and another side length of x. The other one, which has an area of 8x, has one side length of x and one side length of 8. Now the cool thing is, because both the square and the rectangle have a side length equal to x, we can actually squish them together. Right? We can look at it that way, and truly there, we have a combined rectangle that has an area of x squared plus 8x. Of course, you could always take that 8x and break it up into 4x plus 4x. Now graphically, what would that mean? It would mean taking that rectangle of 8x and breaking it into one that has an area of 4x and another one that has an area of 4x. Now, let's say that we took one of those two rectangles and kind of pulled it aside, right? Maybe flipped it a little, like that, and yeah, we'll just get rid of the other one. Well, what could we do to that rectangle now? Well, remember, it's now got a dimension of x. So we could just take it and slide it right up there like that. Now keep in mind, that's still x squared plus 8x, right? It's just x squared plus a 4x plus a 4x. But the really cool thing is now, we essentially have the outlines of a perfect square. The real question becomes, what is missing, right? x squared plus 4x plus 4x, that's not a perfect square, because there's still that part in the green that's missing. But it's not that hard to actually figure out what it is, because it's got two dimensions that are both 4. 4 and 4, 16. So if we add the 16 in, we now have a perfect square. What perfect square do we have? x plus 4 times x plus 4, right? That's why we take half of the linear term, square it, and add it on. That's why it always gives us a perfect square trinomial, right? So when we have something like x squared plus 10x plus 20 it equals 24, right? And we take half of 10, which is 5, we square it and we add it to both sides. We get x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 24 plus 25, right? That x squared plus 10x plus 25 can now be written as x plus 5 times x plus 5, or x plus 5 squared equals 49. We can then, of course, take the square root of both sides. We get x plus 5 equals 7, and x equals 2. x plus 5 equals negative 7, and a little bit more of a challenge, x equals negative 12. Graphically, again, we get that x squared plus 10x equals 24. Right? We take that 10x, we break it up into a 5x and a 5x kind of rearrange it like that, but we're still missing that, that extra little bit, that extra square that we have to add, add on to make it a perfect square. But that's easy enough, because now we can see that what we have to add on to both sides is a 25, right? And this is really cool, because it's, it's easy with kind of a mindless algebraic procedure like completing the square to memorize, okay, I take the number that's multiplying x, I divide it by 2, I square it and I add it on to both sides, and that means that this trinomial is definitely a perfect square. But why that is can be quite a mystery until you think about the geometry of rectangles and what it would take to take a rectangle and make a perfect square out of it. All right? Just wanted to show you all that. Thank you for joining me for another eMath Instruction Common Core Algebra 1 video. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you next time, Keep thinking and keep solving problems.